Sutra. All the kings of demons, the ghosts and spirits, and the ordinary gods see their palaces collapse for no apparent reason. The earth quakes and all the creatures in the water, on the land, and in the air, without exception, are frightened. Yet the ordinary people who are sunk in deep confusion remain unaware of these changes. Commentary When one obtains the great Shuragama Samadhi, the true Samadhi, the demon kings shudder. All the kings of demons, the ghosts and spirits, and the ordinary gods of the six desire heavens, and four Diana heavens see their palaces collapse for no apparent reason. The situation is really out of control for no apparent reason their palaces start falling apart. Have I ever told you about a young disciple I had in Manchuria? He was about 14 years old, and although he was young, his spiritual, spiritual powers certainly weren't insignificant. He could ascend to the heavens and enter the earth. He had opened the five eyes and had not obtained the six spiritual powers. He had five of the spiritual powers but lacked the power of freedom from our flows. When a person attains this power, he becomes an arhat. One day he ascended to the heavens to amuse himself. When he got there, the demon king took a liking to him and trapped him in his blood palace. It was an exquisite palace made of transparent crystal-like material, but he was trapped in it. Since he had opened his five eyes, he could see his drama body being held captive there by the demon king. So he came and told me, Teacher, I went to the heavens and now I can't come back. So you're stuck in the heavens, huh? I said, well, who told you to go there in the first place? I thought that it would be lots of fun, so I went there to take a look. But now that person up in the heavens won't let me come back. I said, if you want to have fun, don't go there to play. Those demons in the six desire heavens are always looking for an opportunity to destroy the summary power of cultivators. Then I said, don't be scared, I'll get you back. I tried to get him back, but the demon king refused to let him go. At that point, he became really frightened and said, he wouldn't let me come back, what should I do? I said, don't worry, I'll bring you back now. Then I used the Suragama Mantra, the section which I've told you to destroy demons, the mantra of the five great hearts. Ah, the demon palace immediately shattered and he came back at that time. This is a true story. Now the palaces of the demon kings have fallen apart and collapsed and the earthquakes and cracks are open in many places and all the creatures in the water, on the land and in the air, without exception, are frightened. All the creatures in the water and on the land are going flying through the air, scared out of their wits and frightened beyond control. Yet, ordinary people who are sunk in dim confusion remain unaware of these changes. Ordinary people do not have such sharp perception and they do not realize the earth is undergoing all these changes. They are not sensitive enough to perceive what the six kinds of quaking occurring in the earth. Sutra, all these beings have five kinds of spiritual powers. They lack only freedom from outflows because they are still attached to worldly passions. How could they allow you to destroy their palaces? That is why the ghost spirits, celestial demons, sprites and goblins come to disturb you when you are in samadhi. Commentary. Now do you understand why do the demons come? It is just because all these celestial beings, ghosts and spirits have five types of spiritual powers, which are the celestial eye, the celestial ear, the knowledge of others' thoughts, the knowledge of previous lives, and the complete spirit. But they don't have the power of freedom from outflows. If they obtained that power, they wouldn't trouble you anymore.
but since uh, they haven't obtained it, they still want to be evil and come to destroy you. They lack only freedom from our flaws. It is not easy to attain the power of freedom from our flaws. What does this mean? I will be very frank about it. What we call our flaws are the daily random thoughts that men and women have about one another. If you have not put an end to such thoughts, then you have not rid yourself of our flaws. Now I discuss this more in depth. And I'd be very frank with you. If I didn't tell you the truth, then you would never know what is really being referred to. Being rid of our flaws simply means retaining your essence. If your essence escapes, that's an outflow. Now I have told you the secret of heaven and earth. If you retain your essence, then you won't have our flaws. Furthermore, if you cannot only prevent your essence from escaping, but can also be without lustful thoughts, even on the subtlest level, then you have truly rid yourself of our flaws. Now, do you understand? Why haven't the celestial demons achieved freedom from our flaws? Because they still have thoughts of lust as do ghosts and spirits. Because they are still attached to worldly passions, Worldly passions are simply a form of lust. That's what they indulge in. How could they allow you to destroy that pal their palaces? Since they are attached to lust, they do not want to see you renounce it. They want you to be greedy for it too. The two of us are good friends, they will say. I have, haven't put this down, so you can't just run away and renounce it. That's why they come. They cannot bear to see you transcend the world. That is why the ghosts, spirits, celestial demons, sprites, and goblins come to disturb you when you are in somebody. When I mentioned goblins in the past, you didn't know what they were, so now I will explain. Do you see how the Chinese character for goblin, Yao, is written? It is the character for woman, Nu, beside the character for a short life for death before 30 years of age. Huan. You can figure out the meaning from there. I don't have to say too much in general. People who die young will become goblins. When you are in Samadhi, they all come en masse to bother you. Their aim, as it said, is to devour the flesh of the monk from Tang. The monk from Tang was great master Swan Tang. Many goblins would have liked to eat his flesh, that is, they wanted to disturb his samadhi. If you cultivate to the point that you have samadhi, the goblins, ghosts, and monsters will want to devour your flesh as well. Actually, they do not really eat your flesh. I will be more honest with you. I will bring it all out in the open and not hold anything back. What is really happening? Retro essence, energy, and spirit are all full because you have no thoughts of lust these demons and ghosts want to steal your treasures that's why they come to disturb you if you have a girlfriend or boyfriend she or he is also stealing your treasures what else did you think was happening the buddha dharma teaches us to practice giving so i'm giving away my treasures to others you say well then you're going to end up as a poor ghost who falls into the house. When that happens, the person who stole your treasures isn't going to say, here, I'll give you back some of your treasures so that you can get out of here there. No one will have you then. You think it over. Sutra. Also, these demons possess tremendous enmity. They are in the grip of their worldly passions while you are within wonderful enlightenment. They cannot affect you any more than a blowing wind can affect a light or a knife can cut through water. If you are like a boiling water, while the demons are like a solid ice, which in the presence of heat soon melts away. Since they really exclusively on spiritual powers, they are like mere guests. Commentary When you achieve some samadhi power in your cultivation, the demon kings will be afraid and so they come to destroy it. They do not want you 
to have somebody. Also, these demons come to give you trouble, and also they possess tremendous enmity. Much wrath. They are in the grip of their worldly passions. They are controlled by their divine sense experiences. Gradually, within wonderful enlightenment, they cannot affect you anymore. That a blowing wind can affect light, or a knife can cut through water. They cannot do anything to you, just as a blowing wind could not make light move, and just as a knife, however many times it is slashed through water, could not harm the water. You are like boiling water in this analogy. The somebody power from your cultivation is compared. To hot water, why the demons are like solid ice. The demon kings can be compared to the solid ice of winter, which, in the presence of heat, soon melts away. As hot as the ice is, the heat of boiling water gradually causes it to melt. Since they really exclusively on spiritual powers, they are like mere guests. All they have going for themselves is their spiritual powers. So they can never be the host or master. They are merely guests. They cannot stay long, and they cannot succeed in their efforts to disturb you. Sutra, they can succeed in their destructiveness through your mind, which is the host of the five skandhas. If the host becomes confused, the guests will be able to do as they please. Commentary, they can succeed in their destructive needs. Through your mind, which is the host of the five skandhas, basically they cannot succeed in their destructiveness. However, if the host becomes confused, if your mind, which is the master of the five skandhas, is deluded, the guests will be able to do as they please. The guests will be able to take advantage of you as long as you, the host, are not confused. They cannot do anything to you. Who is the host? It is your inherent nature. If your inherent nature is confused, if your inherent nature is confused, then the demons can have their way with you. But if your inherent nature is not confused, then their power is to do anything. Sutra: When you are in dhyana, awakened, aware, and free of delusion, their demonic deeds cannot can do nothing to you, as the skandhas dissolve. You enter the light. All those devil arts depend upon dark energy. Since light can destroy darkness, they would be destroyed if they drew near you. How could they dare linger and try to disturb, disrupt your dear somebody? Commentary: When you are in dear now, when you have stilled your thoughts and attained the proper concentration of somebody, you are awakened. Aware and free of delusion, their demonic deeds can do nothing to you. The demons won't be able to trouble you with their tactics. As the skandhas dissolve, you enter the light. Demons belong to the darkness, yin, and the darkness can be dispelled. It is as if the demons were ice and you are hot water. The darkness is dispelled like ice dissolving in hot water. The fire of your wisdom is bright, so you enter the light. All those devils, orbs of demons, externalists, goblins, ghosts, and monsters depend upon dark energy. All their tactics depend on a dark, dismal energy. Since light can destroy darkness, if you have true samadhi and wisdom, your wisdom light will shine forth and dispel the darkness. They would be destroyed if they drew near you. How could the danger to and try to disrupt your sound, your dhyana samadhi? If they came near you, they would do themselves in. So they dare not disturb you. January nineteen eighty three. Skandha demons are not limited to fifty kinds. They there are maybe five hundred, five thousand. Fifty thousand or even five hundred thousand kinds. Each kind can further be divided into ten ten kinds. If analyzed in detail, there are thousands upon tens of thousands of kinds. 
in general what is a skanda diamond basically it's nothing but a mass of yin energy which comes from our yin thoughts yin thoughts include thoughts of greed anger and stupidity they give rise to the skandas of form feeling thought formations and consciousness and in each of these skandas all kinds of yin phenomena are produced this yin phenomena naturally appear when your skill reaches a certain level. If your skill hasn't reached that level, then you won't encounter these kind of demons even if you want to. They manifest only when your skill has reached that level. Don't worry when they appear. There's no need to fear being possessed by demons. When these yin phenomena appear, you should remain calm as if they didn't exist. See them as if not seeing them, hear them as if not hearing them, and smell them without perceiving their smell. If you don't enter into sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tangible objects, and dharmas, then the skanda demons will not be able to do anything to you. If you are without greed, anger, and stupidity, then you will subdue these skanda demons. If you do not have the forms of being selfish, wanting personal profit, seeking, being greedy, or contending, then no demon will be able to do anything to you. Now, as we are investigating the skandha demons, we should not be afraid of demons. There's no need for fear. What is this mass of energy like? There's a rough analogy. When water boils and gives off steam, the rising of the steam indicates that the water is boiling. The demons that you encounter in cultivation are illusory transformations produced from the yin thoughts and yin energy in your nature. If you can remain unmoved by these illusory transformations, then there's no problem. For example, there's nothing strange about boiling water and letting the steam rise. After the steam has risen, you can drink the water. When a person manifests demonic energy, it's like gold being smelted. All the dross is smelted away, leaving only pure gold. Cultivation is like smelting gold. It is said, true gold does not feel the fire of the furnace. You must smelt the pure gold and forge your vara in the indestructible body. To obtain the vara indestructible body, you must apply effort in cultivation at all times, in thought after thought, no matter what level you reach in your cultivation. Do not become happy or afraid. This is a most essential and basic way for cultivators to resolve demonic obstacles. Sutra, if you were not clear and aware but were confused by skandhas, then you, Ananda, would truly become one of the demons. You would turn into a demonic being. Commentary If you were not clear and aware, if you do not understand and wake up but were confused by the demons of the five skandhas, then you, Ananda, would truly become one of the demons. You would turn into a demonic being. You would join the retinue of demons. Sutra, your encounter with Mantanji's daughter was a minor incident. She cast a spell on you to make you break the Buddha's moral precepts. Still, among the 80,000 modes of conduct, you violated only one precept. Because your mind was pure, all was not lost. Commentary your encounter with Mount Tanji's daughter was a minor incident. It was a relatively insignificant, commonplace demonic event. She cast a spell on you to make you break the Buddha's moral precepts. She used a mantra of the ancient Brahma heaven to confuse you and tried to make you break the Buddha's rules. Still, among the 80,000 modes of conduct, you violated only one precept. Because your mind was pure, all was not lost. Because you had already attained the first stage of a hardship, you were not totally confused by her, and you did not fall. Sutra, this would be an attempt to completely destroy your precious enlightenment. 
want it to succeed, you would become like the family of a senior government official who is suddenly excited. His family wanders, bereft and alone, with no one to pity or rescue them. Commentary: This would be an attempt to completely destroy your precious enlightenment. That kind of behavior was an attempt to make you fall. Were it to were it to succeed, you would become like the family of a senior government official who is suddenly exiled. A high official is banished, and his family's property is uh, abruptly confiscated by the emperor. So his family wanders. Bereft and alone, with no one to pity or rescue them, you would be standing all alone, with no place to seek for help, no one to turn to for sympathy or aid.